I have given a name to my pain. Welcome to episode number 12. I had to check on my notes, make sure I didn't pull a Rick shoe and, uh, you know, announce an episode that several, several. He would never do that. uh, Sure he wouldn't. Um, (laughs) Episode 12 of the Batman on Film vlog. I am your host and the founder of Batman on Film, Bill Jett Ramey. With me today is Mario. You're almost becoming a regular of this show, so I can (laughs) even call you a guest anymore. I got the great (laughs) Mario Francisco Robles from. Revenge of the Fans, L Fanboy Podcast, and all that good stuff. How you doing, sir? Doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm barely sleeping, and I'm working harder than I ever have before, yeah. but uh, I'm, I'm feeling good. Oh, good. The new, yeah. site, new site looks great, man. And Thank you. Always, Thank you very much. Always happy to support your, your endeavors there, and, and speaking of your endeavors there, <laughs> you kind of broke the internet yesterday with, Here a, it comes. with, with a story, which... Um, I have lots of thoughts on just from I bet you a, do. Lot, a lot of things, but it was a great, great reporting, great story. It involves, of course, Captain Cap, oh, Captain America, the Captain Marvel film Shazam, because we I still call him Captain Marvel because that's what he was to me as a kid. Um, but the the film Shazam from DC at New Line, and then of course something about Superman. Maybe so. I'll let since it's your story, uh, tell the folks uh, what what the hell might be going on. Well, before I get into that, are you gonna acknowledge the the how I dressed up for you I, today? Um, you very looking very Clark Kentish there, sir. And and yes. the, let, let, let's test yes. your Superman nerd them. Which okay. S is this? All right, it is. It is not George Reeves. It is. It is. This is the George Reeves okay. uh, Adventures of Superman. Okay, cool. I yeah, thought, okay, I thought it looked like it. I didn't know he had that big. The bottom of the S. I didn't know it was that big of a. Of a oh, this is it. Uh, good. It this look, is it. I, hey, one of my favorites. <laughs> I I love those reruns of that show as a kid, man. Yes. Sure, I'm laying out of them. bed. Yes. Yes. So uh, all right. So here we go. Yes. Yesterday, I I exclusively reported at RevengeOfTheFans.com. That Superman is set to appear in some way, shape, or form in the upcoming Shazam film. So that was kind of the uh, the nuts and bolts of it. You know, I, I did some speculation as to what type of appearance it might be. Uh, I, I mentioned one theory that I would love for it to be. But um, I honestly, you know, all I really know is that he's in the film. I don't know how big a part. I don't know if it's just a little tiny cutesy cameo or something more pivotal. All I know is I was told by someone I trust that Cavill is in the movie. Here, here's the here's the good news from my point, from my point of view. It's at least we're going to see Cavill. It means it probably means Cavill will be playing Superman in a Superman film <laughs> at some point in the future. Which, yes. as, as you know, I have said I'm a huge fan of Henry Cavill Superman, mm-hmm. and I did not want uh, Justice League to be his last. Uh, hurrah as the Man of Steel, and I thought yep. I've, lo- I've thought from the moment that his sequel was hijacked to become Batman v Superman, I thought that was wrong, and I thought he deserved a proper Superman film. So on that on that regard, I'm happy. On the other but... hand, on the other hand, and I, want, <laughs> and I want to turn the tables and ask you, man, okay, because you, you are a Superman fan. Yes. D- does it? How does it make? Does that make you? Does it bum you out? Does it kind of piss you off that? Hey, I'd rather. I'm great. We're going to see Cavill Superman again, but I'd rather. I want to see him in his own movie. I really don't care about seeing him in a cameo in Shazam. And is that? 
Is that kind of, See, here's you, the, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know I, yeah. I know what you're saying, yeah. but honestly, I guess I'm being more of a realist about it because I just, I know that the sequel is still a ways off and yeah. I'd rather not wait three years to see him. So on the contrary, as a Superman fan, yeah. I'm ecstatic to see him in a capacity where he's inspiring others and being that ideal of hope that we kept hearing so much about in Man of Steel that I don't think we ever really properly got to see it all that much with all of the angsty Superman stuff that Cavill had to do for those yeah. first two films. I'm dying to see him be a, a, a boy's idol, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. inspire people for good and to do more of what he did in that opening little sequence there in Justice League where he's speaking to a couple of kids holding up a, a cell phone camera. You know, I, I by the way, I said I, I would love it if, if we find out that those two boys are ba Billy Batson and Freddie Freeman. I think that would be amazing. But I, I, I love the idea of getting to see him inspire others and being that beacon of hope that other people want to strive towards. So if I have to wait, you know, I, I, look, I'm going to have to wait no matter what, at least two or three years to see Cavill get a full proper movie again. So in the meantime, feeling his influence and his presence in the DCU and knowing that he's, he's being um, you know, a cause for good in, in that world, to me, it's a win-win as a Superman fan. Don't, don't you think this goes against what Warner Brothers said they were going to do? They were going to get away from this type of cameo-type stuff, this crossover See? and whatnot. And now they're that now that seems like now look, I don't know if this if this is a filmmaker decision, um, yeah. then I have a different perspective. But if this is a Warner Brothers thing, like yeah, let's kind of work Henry Cavill Superman mm -hmm. in, into this, just you know, to kind of show that. Shazam yeah. is part of the the greater cinematic DC universe. Then I, I, that kind of pisses me off because it it, it, it reeks of we, we haven't learned our lesson. We we're still yeah. we're still banging our head against the wall, and they never figure out the wall. Still gonna, the wall's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah you know. Go, so go ahead. You see, sir. for me, it's a little yeah. it's a little unclear, honestly, because. You know, I was told that Warner Brothers wants him in the movie, but that doesn't mean that David Sandberg didn't also want him. You know what I mean? But the person yeah. I spoke to made sure to emphasize that they do want him to pop up in the film. But like I said, I don't know if Sandberg had that idea himself and it was yeah. just one of those perfect little scenarios. We're like, good, let's do this then. Um, but as for how I think it'll play out or, or whether or not it contradicts the Vulture report and what they said back then, I honestly think it all comes down to what type of appearance it is. If it really is just the equivalent of him making his presence known in this world, which is the equivalent, you know, it, it's a slightly more built up version of what happened in Wonder Woman where Bruce Wayne was acknowledged. You know, we, 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 we were led to think about Ben Affleck's yeah. Bruce Wayne in the beginning and at the end where he's telling, you know, tell me your story and the whole thing. So if it's, if it's something along those lines where it's just they're making the, the presence felt, but it doesn't really affect the movie itself or the or the main plot line, then I don't think it contradicts the Vulture Report. Because remember, they said Wonder Woman is their template moving forward. And Wonder Woman did have those light touches. So for me... If Superman's appearance is kept light and it is just a, a thing where we know Billy loves him and maybe he had a chance to meet him once and it left a strong impression on him, but then they leave it at that, I think it still falls in line with their general idea of, yes, we're all in a shared world, but each movie will tell its own story. Here, Okay, from the other point of view, I kind of did a little research. I follow yeah. some Captain Marvel, Shazam Twitter, Twitter site or Twitter uh, accounts, and there's some some websites and so forth. Uh, it seems like the Captain Marvel Shazam fans aren't very happy about this overall, and it's like, you know, Shazam, Captain Marvel finally gets a a, a yeah. film, and they've been talking about this for years, doing uh, a Captain Marvel Shazam film, and now it's happening, and they're going to put. Superman in it, and we don't. Again, we don't know the extent. It's probably it's, it's got to be some sort of cameo of some sort. Mm -hmm. But they're essentially the same effing character. I mean, for <laughs> Christ's sakes, um, DC National Publications sued Fawcett Comics for copyright infringement <laughs> because Captain Marvel yeah. was same same powers and so forth, and won. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. And 
you know, eventually DC gets control of the character, but the, you know, there and there was so there's a little bit of that me in that like really you got to put Superman of all people put him in there. It's and and again, like you said, it depends on how they do it. But what's your thoughts from that point of view of as uh, well, from the Captain Marvel fan point? Yeah, of view? I, I've noticed that it's two completely different responses. Captain Marvel fans are apprehensive yeah. because they don't want him to have to share the spotlight or have to play second fiddle in any way, shape or form. But Superman fans I, are ecstatic. I, I, I saw it's that. funny. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Superman fans are like, yes, we get to see him. We get to see yeah. him inspire you. Know, all that stuff I said before. So I do feel for Captain Marvel yeah. fans. I, I can see how this would be a thorn in their side. But a, let me just remind you, Again, we don't know to what extent Superman's going to appear. It could just be a little thing. It could be the equivalent of like Captain America's presence felt in Spider-Man Homecoming, yeah. where we know he's there, and it's kind of funny, and not, there's a novelty to having him there, but he didn't affect the story at all. But to me, there the, the other reason that they should kind of like try to accept this and be in you know, come around to this idea is... Not a lot of people know Shazam or love him that much yes. in terms of mainstream general audiences. Yeah. And having Superman's presence in there, and if they find a way to maybe mention that in the marketing, that could bring a whole new wave of eyeballs onto this character you love so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if having him in there acts as a portal, as a gateway to get people to focus on, oh, you know, I never knew about this Billy Batson yeah. thing. and. The Shazam, that, that's interesting, and that's wild, and his powers are magical in nature, and that actually can hurt Superman, because yeah. he's, you know, he's vulnerable to magic. Like, you know, I feel like it can help bring a whole bunch of new people into the fold, which is really what DC and Warner Bros. want to do anyway, right? They they want to, yeah. they want mass audiences. They want to get a, a big, wide audience into these movies. So that, I would say that to the Captain Marvel fan. You know, A, we don't know how what it's going to be. Maybe it's really subtle. And B, this could this could elevate the fandom a little bit and bring a whole bunch of new people to come and love and appreciate Captain Marvel or Shazam. Yeah, my my take on it was here's how I would do it. I think I've told you before. I would I would make Billy Batson a huge DC Comics Superman fan. Yeah, I mean, reads DC Comics, loves Superman, has Superman action figures. And all of that, and then yeah. essentially becomes Superman. You know, he's, yeah. he's still he's influenced by Superman and doing you know truth, justice, American way, all that stuff, being a hero. But it's not, you know, it's not part of the DC universe proper. And that's mainly because I want Shazam and any sequels to be its own little Shazam Captain Marvel universe. Go crazy, yeah. do talky tawny. You know, they're, Dr. Savannah is the the main villain of the. Of the of the film, Mark Strong is playing Doctor Savannah, but do talk yeah. to Tony, do Mister Mind, uh, you know Uncle Dudley, all that you know uh, Captain Marvel Junior and all that all that stuff they had. You can get really be a little silly, you know, be PG, yeah. make this for kids and ha make it fun. So look, I'm going to support it either way. I love Cavill. If he shows up, you know, I'm not going to like go, you know, I don't know, do something crazy <laughs> like that would never happen. Like go pick it in front of Warner Brothers. I'm, I'm <laughs> um, but release I, the non-Superman yes, cut of yes. Captain Marvel. I, I just I, I'm leery of Warner Brothers because it 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 just reeks of them doing the same thing. And I hope if it is if it if it happens, I hope that it is a filmmaker decision and not yeah. a studio saying, "Hey, get Superman in there so we can." And it's be the same stuff they've been doing. So. Yeah. Well, also, yeah. you know, while we're talking about the connections to the shared universe, you know, I understand that, you know, you would prefer it not. Yeah. But, yeah, there's an inter another interesting wrinkle in all this, something that I sort of mentioned in the report that, you know, I didn't go too big into, mm -hmm. is that, you know, Dwayne Johnson has been wanting to do something with Henry Cavill's Superman for a while. They teased about it on social media last year. Yeah. We're talking about doing something. They have the same manager. They're both managed by The Rock's ex-wife, Danny Garcia. And apparently, you know, Black, you know, he wants Superman to appear in Black Adam. And we know that Black uh, Adam is part of the Shazam yeah. world. So, the, you know, all these things were going to be interconnected at some point as, you know, anyway. As a Superman fan, would you want to see Black Adam in a Superman film, or or, or vi I, I, vice versa. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I don't know enough about him, so I, know, I'm not really the best person to ask when it comes to that. He was Captain Marvel back in the day, 
you know, yeah. and then he turned bad. I mean, there's been different versions, but I mean, he's a he's a he's been trained as a villain. He's been betrayed as an anti-hero, and I think that's the yeah. route that that Dwayne Johnson is going the anti-hero thing. Yeah, I, I just you know don't put Superman in Black Adam. Let that should be Batman. I mean, I'm Batman. Look at me. I mean, I'm Batman on the mind. <laughs> that should be Captain. That should be Shazam, Captain Marvel. Yeah, fighting it out with. Yeah, all I know with, is like with, you know with, he's had a real uh, yeah. he's had a real like sort of uh, I don't know I'm trying to use a good he's you know he, he's had a stiffy for this idea yeah, for yeah. a long time well, even yeah. a couple of years ago on Instagram you know before he decided to do Black Adam yeah. it looked like he was flirting with playing John Stewart because yeah. at some point he posted a picture of John Stewart talking about like holding Superman like stepping on like fighting Superman as John Stewart yeah and in general because it's weird by the way sort of side tangent yeah. Dwayne Johnson's deal with DC is bizarre, if you ask me. I don't know if you followed this, but it's one of these things where many years ago when they saw that The Rock was becoming a big deal, they kind of offered him like a blank check. Where like, you pick which character you want to play. So at first he was attached to Lobo. Yeah, I remember that. Then he was dropping teases about being Jon Stewart's Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. Then he let it be known that when it comes to Shazam, he could have played either one. They said he could play Shazam or Black Adam, and he chose Black Adam. It's just like a weird. Have you ever heard of a deal like that? You know, where one of these movies, like they they, they get the actor first, and just yeah, you have your pick of the litter. Which one do you want to play? It's yeah. wacky. It but is. all I know yeah. is you know. But he's been ever since like for these last two or three years, he's been had his his heart set on somehow tussling with Henry Cavill's Superman. So it looks like ultimately he's going to try to get Superman into Black Adam. And we know Superman's going to be in Shazam, so they're, they're right there is some connected the thread. Yeah, it makes me question I know it makes his, DC, his DC knowledge because yeah. have, have Superman and Black Adam cross paths? Probably, yes. You know, it's not, I would say yes. But that Black Adam is a Captain Marvel Shazam universe character, and I just, you know, whatever. Okay, yeah. whatever, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, just look. Here's my deal. Get me What's a damn, your deal? Get me, get me a, a, a Cavill Superman solo film. I'll be happy. Yep. Uh, that I am banging the drum for that. And Matt Reeves, I want I, Warner Brothers, leave Matt Reeves alone. No damn cameos. No wings and nods. Let that man make the film because I, I, I'll lose my stuff, really. when it's If it's Batman, yeah, but absolutely I, I that needs to be left alone and i get what they're doing i'm just like i told you mario i worry will they have they learned their lesson are they going to do this again with even with all the shakeups and all the changes have been made? yeah I, hopefully hopefully they have so hopefully they have yeah any last words man all I know is, for whatever reason, I'm feeling, and perhaps naively so, but I'm feeling optimistic about the DC future. I know that, you know, this last report is cause for concern for you, and I see where you're coming from, and I guess, you know, we're both going to have to see how it all plays out. But I, I, I really, you know, I don't know, for some reason, I'm feeling good. And, and, and the fact that we might get the Superman appearance, to me, it's all part of the rehabilitation of the character as far as I'm concerned. Because I feel like his last two endeavors, you know, his pre-Justice League endeavors did some damage to his public appeal and to the way, you know, the, pe the way people perceive him. So to me, having him pop up in Shazam and stuff like this and knowing that, like, DC is willing to put him in these kinds of settings where he's inspiring others. To me, it's all part of rehabilitating the last son of Krypton, and that excites me because I, I think it's 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 been long overdue. Justice League was the first step in that direction, so if this is what's going to lead us towards like the ultimate portrayal of Superman, played by Henry Cavill, which should be getting announced at San Diego Comic Con this year, I'm ecstatic. Well, we will find out. So, anything to plug, man? Yeah, well, just you know, revengeofthefans.com is open every day with news and analysis and reviews and all that sort of stuff. Uh, episode forty-six of my El Fanboy podcast came out today, Friday. I don't know if you're are you releasing this today, Jet? I will. Yes. Yeah. So the El Fanboy podcast is up and available wherever premium podcasts are found. My secondary podcast, which is dedicated just to the site, which is called The Revengers, that goes up every Tuesday. We had our second episode go up earlier this week. So there you go. All right. Those are all my plugs. Very good. All right. You can follow me on Twitter at Batman on Film. 
And uh, as always, Batman on film, authoritative, definitive. Dead gum original. Yes, it is. All right. Thanks for <laughs> watching. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> well, well done, sir. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.